And a big matchup November the 28th here at the Murph. They'll take on nationally ranked Miami. The Hurricane could still be number one or two in the country when that occurs, and that's a big ball game for Al Luganville's team they're looking forward to. But right now, they're in control. The Sam Rogers takes the kickoff, and he is hammered at the 13-yard line. And I think we've seen the last of Sean Gray, at least for his sake, I hope so. Michael Pettis will come in for the mop-up work here late in the ball game and expect a lot of reserves. But look at this. Bo Miles with 413 is still in the contest. And now Lugan will... to rating on the sideline, too, Coach. We've got to be careful when the cameras are on. It was funny. While we were gone, folks, here on the big screen at the Murph, they were challenging the crowd to answer the mysterious question of how much mileage Al Lugamil's put on. He's a guy that loves to pace those sidelines. And what was the winning, uh, winning one? 16,000? 16,000 yards. He is pay he's got more yardage than Marshall Falk. They didn't think anybody in San Diego State had more, more yardage than Marshall Falk, that's for sure. Pettis is going to throw out to Chris Brassfield now. And Brassfield is going to run it upfield and get out of bounds. They're going to mark him inbounds. He's tackled there. Close to the first down, they'll give it about an eight-yard gain on that particular play. Chris Brassfield with a big night here for the Miners. But the hope and promise of the first half has turned into the reality check and despair of the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. 49-21, under four minutes to play. UTEP will now be guaranteed a losing season in this the fourth year. David Lee is head coach. Brassfield now with five catches for 40 yards as we're down to three and a half minutes in this one. Pettis with big Bo Miles in the backfield. He's going to throw it out there again for Brassfield. This time he drops it, though. That ball is going to be dead there as Sutton picked it up. Eric Sutton in the ball game now for San Diego State. And up until last week when the Miners surrendered those 42 points to Colorado State, a season ago, the minor defense, the most they gave up in a ball game was 31. That came against the BYU Cougars. So for back-to-back -back weeks, Miners defense being riddled for over 40 points. And it's been the big play. And it's been, once again, that part of the ball club that David Lee and company are very concerned about the Miners secondary. But as it stands right now, the Miners, I can't see uh, trying much else. They've tried about every player they can in that secondary position. And when you got a freshman, a true freshman, and Dwayne Maynard trying to get on to Darnay Scott, one of the best receivers, that's a tough assignment for anybody. And Bo Miles will take the carry. He couldn't do it. And redshirt freshman Marcus Landrum got his shot. Uh, he couldn't do it. So at this point, uh, minor players have been told by the coaches that we have got a program we're going to install, run the defense we wanted to. And, you know, for most of the ball game tonight, Fred, it was a very competitive contest. But once again, going to the fourth quarter, and they surrender 22 points. And I don't know if anybody can figure that one out. Well, for one, I think that the Miners are tired on defense now at this point in the ball game. For two, they are playing a very good San Diego State team. But you're right. Uh, this isn't the NFL. You can't trade for a defensive back. That's right. These are the players that David Lee is going to have to work with and all you can do is is try to coach him better or try to recruit better there there's not much of an alternative david lee is set on this defensive system he believes in it it's different from last year the coaching staff has changed i thought you brought up a really good point earlier in the week people are asking how come jim hess is is on the verge of having a winning season at new mexico state and david lee is still struggling with a losing program here at UTEP. I thought you brought up an excellent point that David has had several changeovers in staff. Yeah. One thing Jim Hess has been able to do is keep that staff intact, the same coaching techniques throughout his tenure in Las Cruces, and David Lee has changed defensive coordinators twice now. There you see Raymond Lindholm with a drop right there. Michael Pettis running for his life as he got away from the pressure. Terrell Steen is still in there. He was pursuing, and we see the numbers for Michael Pettis. A kid that really has been worked out of this lineup as far as uh, the quarterback is concerned. He has had games where he's played, but to be quite honest about it, David Lee feels that you know he's going to go to this option game full tilt, and he's very excited about the freshman Carlton Washington, but Carlton is going to try to redshirt this season. He is right now out with a broken wrist, and he has not taken any snaps in practice, although he has been in practice, but Michael Pettis, the junior, the veteran who won four ball games for him a year ago, basically been uh, in platoon duty. He's come up with some big ball games, now running around, and he'll fire it out to Brassfield. No, make that Lindholm with the reception. Raymond Lindholm with the catch, and that'll be close to a first down. That'll bring up Lindholm. Third, make that fourth and short. 
Mariners also traveled a very talented freshman running back here that we thought may get some action. A young man out of New Mexico, Jermaine Brown, who they also won to redshirt this year. Well, the Miners just searching. Boy, this football team right now is having a tough time dealing with all the adversity that has come their way. And, and some of the adversity is self-inflicted. Certainly the, the half dozen players who uh, went out to a party in Fort Collins and were suspended this week. It's been a very difficult week for David Lee and this football team. Sometimes adversity brings you together, brings you a closer unit. It's been a very difficult week, and Utah coaching staff obviously had this team ready to play. But I think in the end, you have to admit that San Diego State has superior talent, and that finally came through in four quarters. No question about it. This San Diego State program under Al Luganville now in his fourth year. They've had winning seasons under Luganville, and of course, going into this one, high expectations out here on the coast. He's got the folks excited, as we had mentioned during the ball game. But he's recruiting a different kind of athlete, and one of the big reasons why they've been able to make that jump in national prominence is number 28, Marshall Falk. He's just given them a whole new dimension for their football team and Luganmill says in the 28 years he's been a head coach and assistant as the flags go now and things are turning ugly with 142 to go in this ball game. Miners just trying to get out of here and get back on a flight and go back to El Paso and try and prepare for Utah do the best they can. We'll have the ball game for you on TSM next week at noon right here on TSM and the Utes will come into that ball game it don't get any easier and I know you've been hearing that and we've been telling you that but it's really going to be true this particular week Ron McBride's team goes to Albuquerque and McBride is the kind of coach that you don't want to lose to the Lobos a team you should beat and then come in and prepare for a minor team that's going to be over for the season 0 and 6 that is going to be a struggle Frank Dolce one of the better quarterbacks in the Western Athletic Conference uh, Miners will indeed have a tough task at hand preparing for next week it's first and 15 now and more movement and even trying to get this one finished is becoming a chore for both of these teams. Pettis gets the ball snapped so he can get an offside call against San Diego State. The kid's still thinking out there. Give him credit. And it's going to be offside, so they get the five yards right back. That'll put it at first and ten. A minute, 21 to go. And a reminder for you folks who are still with us here tonight. No sisters following this football game. Rather, TSM News with Michelle Dabney Pettis. Jim Gamble with weather and Paul Zimmerman, the Z Force back with sports. Then following TSM News in its entirety, we will have Saturday Night Live for you right here on TSM, where the fun has just begun. <laughs> Hadn't really begun for the Miners at all this season, but they're playing the string out here as Pettis completes the pass to the far side of the field. That's to Brown. There, Brown with the reception. He had a big catch here tonight, 41 yard gainer. And as we talked about, the Miners going into the final quarter of play. They were at 21 points, and they still are there. It's been their poorest quarter as far as scoring this season. Just 18 points for the Miners. They had surrendered 30 for the entire season. Now coming into this ballgame tonight, they gave up 22 in this quarter uh, alone against San Diego State. And, of course, last week they gave up 21. So in the past two ball games, 43 points have been given up in the fourth quarter of play. So the Miners get to that you know, get to that final quarter with a chance to win the ball games, and for some reason, who can who can find out? They just cannot get it finished. Boy, there's a nice throw from Michael Perez rolling to his left, firing downfield with Derek Brown, who makes the catch, and Derek having one of his better ball games. We got to decide, I guess, on a Coors Light player of the game. We have still got to make a decision on it, and I guess we're going to vote up here and vote in the truck. We're going to go with Sean Gray. So Sean Gray for the second straight week is our Coors Light player of the game. And Dick Shire Coors will make a $100 cash contribution to the El Paso Coalition for Literacy in the name of UTEP quarterback Sean Gray. Miners offense statistics will once again look impressive, but 21 points is disappointing and to give up 49 on the other end is totally unacceptable. Miners moving the ball up and down. These stats will be somewhat deceptive. Come on, J.J., get in the end zone. J.J. with over 40 family and friends here tonight. He had a cheer for number four in the Miners orange and white. He can't get in the end zone. You know he wants to with uh, the family and friends here. Uh, he just like getting another score on the board for the Miners. Pettis that time firing out. And Michael, look at the junior from San Antonio. Hadn't played too much at all this year. Had a couple of, had one ball game. He started, of course, for the injured Sean Gray. But he's out there throwing the football, something he does extremely well. He's back again. He'll fire towards the end zone. It's caught. Derek Brown, a minor touchdown. 
So the Miners go downfield. They finish out the string in this ball game. They get seven more points. Well, they got six more at least on the board right now. And for Michael Pettis, his second touchdown toss of the season. And we saw a touchdown toss earlier this year from Sean make that earlier this game by Sean Gray. We're going to take a timeout. 36 seconds to go. The Miners trail it 49-27. Maybe you need a loan to open new doors. Or a loan to keep you rolling. Maybe even a loan to expand a few horizons. At State National, we've been lending money to El Pasoans for more than a century. Longer than any other El Paso bank. For one simple reason. Good loans make good friends. State National. Where we're going is where you want to be. Welcome back, folks. What you saw there was an incomplete pass and a two-point conversion attempt by the Miners. They stay at 27 as the band cranks it up. Boy, they traveled a long way to San Diego, California, driving it. The band drove it here along with the equipment truck. I guess they're all going to be heading back. It won't be a fun trip back to El Paso as the Miners are going to fall to 0-6 on the season. There you see some of the band members. Larry White accompanying his band members out to San Diego, California, where it's been... Real easy tonight for the San Diego State Aztecs, at least in the fourth quarter up until that point. Miners were hanging tough. Pettis, by the way, in that last drive, six of nine. Well, at least six of nine in the ball game now for 68 yards, a majority of that coming on that final drive. This is a long way to come to be kicked back to Texas, giving up 49 points. You saw Al Luganville, he's on the sidelines talking to Eric Sutton, a sophomore. He wasn't happy with the pass defense in that last particular drive, even though his club's up 49 to 27. Uh, Al Luganville uh, talking to Mr. Sutton on the sidelines, not happy with what he uh, demonstrated on the field for San Diego State. And uh, my gosh, Fred, could we see uh, maybe uh, the way the miners are lining things up, we could see the old onside kick with 36 seconds to go. Miners have passed tonight on the big board here at the Murph, showing 242 yards passing for the Miners. And once again, as we said, folks, the offense hadn't been a problem. It's the other side of the football, it's had a problem stopping the opponent, and especially the last two weeks in the fourth quarter, David Lee said after Colorado State, as Marshall Falk will try the onside kick, it'll be recovered there quickly for San Diego State, and they'll get the football, and with 33 seconds to go, they're just going to run things out. He said they had a total collapse last week. I'm not sure what David's going to say in this particular ball game, but I don't know if he'll have much the same feeling in this particular contest, but I know last week terribly disappointed in the finish by the Miners, and tonight they surrender even more points. One more point, 22 compared to the 21 they gave up to CSU. It'll be interesting to see what Coach has to say. Well, they're playing a much superior football team this week as opposed to, to Colorado State, although, you know, maybe the Rams are a bit underestimated. They went down and won at Colorado Springs today against the Air Force Academy. Maybe Earl Bruce's team is coming of age, but I don't know how UTEP is going to stop Utah next week. If Dolce is one of the better passers in the conference, and that'll do it, folks. I do believe Kip Jeffrey's got the carry. The Miners are going to fall to 0-6, 0-4 in Western Athletic Conference play, and the beat goes on for San Diego State. Al Luganville gets some help from his friends at Albuquerque. Dennis Francioni and company upsetting Utah tonight, 24-7. So San Diego State will be all by themselves atop the Western Athletic Conference at 3-0. Utah is next at 2-1. The Air Force Academy is 3-2. The ball game here tonight from San Diego, California. Is Al Luganville, San Diego State Aztecs blow open a ball game that was 27-21 after three quarters. They score 22 in the fourth, and they go on to beat the Miners. David Lee's team now 0-6, 49-27 is our final score. We hope you enjoyed it tonight from San Diego. Don't forget, next week we'll be on the air at noon with Utah and the Miners from Salt Lake City for Fred Albers and for our entire crew here in San Diego. We bid you a good night. Stay tuned next for TSM News. Final score once again, San Diego State 49, the Miners 27. So long from San Diego. Now.